Hello and welcome to the Pop Bucket Podcast. I'm Martin Newton and with me today is James. Hi there. Zara. Hello. Sophie. Hi. And Michael. Hello. So uh, first up, James has received a question from our, one of our listeners. James? Yeah, well, we've got a question from Will Dorito King. I like the name. Um, <laughs> Will says, do we think the Wii U needs a price cut in the UK to entice more people? Um, I, I mean, Martin, you're probably the only one that bought that shit. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really love the console. Mm. I don't want... I can't see the point of having a third console that's pretty much identical to the PlayStation and Xbox. It's something that offers something completely different. Because otherwise, what's the point of spending another couple hundred quid on something that's another console can do? Yeah, I mean, and, I, that's kind of. I guess that's always kind of been the Wii's thing, hasn't it? The, the original Wii, they didn't kind of throw mm-hmm. their money into kind of graphics and you know amazing kind of sounds. It was kind of it was all about some sort of innovation, I suppose, and trying to change things. Exactly, and I think with things like Zombie U, which I love, it's one of my favourite games of the last few years. I took gave nine out of ten. It was just something totally completely different, like a proper game, and not just Death Squad 2000, just like playing a, a generic guy going around shooting people all day. Yeah, it's great. Time. It's something a bit different. <laughs> I want to play that now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what the Wii U needs is unique games and interesting experiences rather than a price cut. Mm. Because I buy lots of get consoles because it's one that's sort of my passion. But if if you had to choose, I would pick an Xbox or a PlayStation and the Wii U. I wouldn't buy uh, all three. All three. Yeah. If I was a general normal punter, personally, yeah. I yeah. buy. I suppose I go buy. I go buy the Xbox or PlayStation based on the exclusives, and then buy the Wii U, personally. Yeah. And I'll do the same again for the next generation with mm. Xbox and PlayStation. It's interesting because the Wii U, it's always sort of been the third way the Nintendo mm. console has been for the last couple of years. And people tend to get quite sneery about it and say, oh, you know, it's full of a lot of, you know, sing-along games and dancing games. But the money that that rakes in from those sort of titles gives, you know, Nintendo the chance to actually go and make little games like Paper Mario or whatever. Mm. And yeah. actually, it benefits you know hardcore gamers as well. Yeah, well, I know uh, some of Sophie's favourite games of recent years have been like the SingStar on the PlayStation. Mm. It's not a normal gaming experience, but it brings something to the living room. I think everyone yeah. can enjoy. It works. It's a party. She doesn't yeah. enjoy my singing. <laughs> <laughs> no one does, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> we can look forward to more of that later, but. Uh, you know what, the only time that I actually use, I, I, I haven't got a Wii U, but I've got a, the original Wii. The only time I ever use my Wii is at Christmas. And that's mm. obviously when you've got loads of people around. Um, and, you know, you've got obviously like multiplayer games that you wouldn't necessarily have on other consoles. That's the only time I will a- actually whip out my Wii. That sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was the same, really. We kind of used it for, yeah, communal time. We'd, you know, have the family around and, you know, play a bit of... Um, I don't know, tennis or something like that. Wii Sports yeah. tennis, but... but I used it to weigh game. myself. <laughs> That's what I use it for. I say, right, I've eaten a burger, I need to whip out the Wii. The Wii Fit game. And then you get the, the little like, like Wii U character just uh, sort of winning at you, saying it's been 90 days since you yeah. last stepped on it. Exactly, and then it's looking a bit more rotund than normal as well. <laughs> That's exactly why I don't use that. <laughs> But, uh, Martin, what do you think about games that are available on other consoles that the Wii U are bringing out with some slightly different features, like they brought out the Batman, the Armoured City uh, edition, which was basically the same, but you kind of you had mini-games to you know unlock think, doors instead of actually just unlocking a door with a button. I think <laughs> if, you haven't, if you don't any, own any of the other consoles, perfectly fine, but... Even a die-hard game, I can't imagine why you'd want to spend... Because you can get Batman on the Xbox or PlayStation for like 15 quid now. I yeah. wouldn't see myself spending 30 quid for the Wii U one for the extra bit of DLC that's a little bit old now. 
but uh, it's things like Nintendo Land Zombie U and some other more unique games, or like Rayman Legends. Or, that's not yeah. exclusive anymore, but still. Yeah, I mean Bayonetta two. That would that would tempt me because that's that's going to be an exclusive, isn't it? So to say. Oh. Yeah. Um, and you know, I never thought Bayonetta would come back. It looked pretty doomed. So yeah, I'm happy to see it coming to to Wii U. Well, because. And obviously got the Nintendo big hitters like Mario, which we can expect more at E3. Mm. And because I, like, I don't like the 2D Mario games, but I love the 3D ones. Mm. Like Mario 64 is what kicked off for me, and Safe loves mm. that, I know. Mario 64 was one of my favourite favorite yeah, games on the awesome, 64. It? it was. And I'm probably one of the, the only one of the three or the four of you that actually isn't a big gamer, but it's games mm. like Mario that are sort of more than games. They're like memories from your childhood with the music and the graphics. Yeah. yeah. My wife's the same. Like, um, she, you know, she, she really likes playing Zelda, um, Ocarina of Time. And mm. she's not really a massive gamer, but things like that, I think it's kind of, it's the nostalgia factor. And there's, yeah, there's, I don't know, it's a, it's a whole story attached to it. But it's, it's funny, uh, I hadn't played the game for like, I don't know, eight uh, years or something like that uh, on the 3DS re release. But you can still remember the buttons to do the different tunes on a computer. Yeah. Time. It just it never leaves you, that memory. It is weird, it's isn't it? It's a song of it's... time. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Right, okay, but oh, to go back to the actual question, does a Wii U need a price cut? I say no, it needs <laughs> games, but they will be coming. It needs exclusive it needs titles. Exclusive. And, yeah. yeah, and I think Nintendo maybe start, need to start treating sort of third-party developers a little bit better, um, trying to be a bit more encouraging uh, in terms of not relying solely on stuff that they make and then... Yeah. Having an attitude like, oh, if you want to make something, fine. They should really get behind stuff and push it and, you know, market it. I think Lego City Undercover is going to be a brilliant game. It looks it. Mm-hmm. It shows what the Wii U can do. But So, yeah, needs more games, but not a price cut. Because if you think, uh, Will, uh, it wants it to be 60 quid cheaper, but it's only a couple of games, and the console can last six years. So... It's yeah, good, good return on investment. Good return on investment, mm. I think yeah. you're right. But we had another question. Uh, a film-based one now. Oh. Uh, Alan uh, asks, are there any films you don't like watching as you're scared of them? Because something, you, you watch them in your childhood and it's freaked you mm. out or something like that. <laughs> oh, probably Chitty Chitty Bang Bang for me every time. Well, yeah, the child catcher. Ooh, yeah, the child yeah. catcher. Yeah. I, 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 that guy, he, oh, he does things to my mind. Yeah. I can't face it. For me, it's probably Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. No, what's really? the second The second film? The one where they have like robot clones of themselves. Is that with the Grim Reaper? Uh, I think that was the first one. I can't remember, but it's like the Bill and Ted sequel. And like yeah. they had like robotic versions of Bill and Ted, and they like they like had a bit where they like just like <laughs> sort of peeled away and shoot that they were robots, and that freaked me out so bad. I haven't watched it since. Because <laughs> uh, Alan, because he, he is my brother, he uh, he's the one who actually asked me the question. Because uh, he made me watch Last Boy <laughs> Scout when I was like two years old or three years old. Uh, and he made me watch lots of things. Uh, yeah. I, I can't I imagine it's a bit like uh, Clockwork Orange when uh, he's forced to watch a film. Yeah. I imagine like, I'm going to pin you down with your eyes open. Because like, I can reprogram it. Because he made me watch that. I can remember being really scared of it. Mm. Yeah, I, I was going to say that. It. Clowns freak that. the crap out of me. Yeah, I'm not scared of clowns. I find them a bit odd. Hello, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> but God. I, I remember that really freaks me out. And, I've got uh, a couple. I've got uh, Chucky because I remember my 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 cousins went over to America after the first one came out or the second one I can't remember, mm. and they brought one of those Chucky dolls back with them, and we were still quite young. 
Um, and when I used to be like, really close with them and I, they used to babysit me and my brother and stuff and they had it hanging up behind their door. So like when, <laughs> when my aunt was like tucking us in at night and I closed the door, there was this creepy doll just <laughs> hanging behind the door. It used to freak me out. And also more recently Cloverfield, but that's only because like the big um, monster, whatever it is, its yeah. joints are like the wrong way and it freaks the crap out of me. <laughs> like its joints, yeah, it shouldn't do stuff like that. <laughs> There's those little spidery things in the sewer as well. Those are kind of... Yeah, gross. I don't like those. Horrible. But That's why I can't play Dead Space. Oh, I love Dead <laughs> yeah, Space. That's a brilliant game. Yeah. I know why, yeah. I know what reminds you of that. But another film... Well, I don't remember this, but apparently uh, my brother Alan, after making me watch uh, Nightmare on Elm Street when I was a couple of years old, he said he had to go to bed with me because I was terrified... He said it was a bit with uh, the body bag, a bit in the whole school hallway. <laughs> I thought I was petrified and imagine I was in tears and and hence yes. I'm traumatised to this day. I, imagine. <laughs> I just don't think that things like lot. that now are funny in horror <laughs> films. Like now with films like Saw and Hostel, you know, yeah. you watch something like Nightmare on Elm Street now and some of the scenes are hilarious. They're more like yeah. comedies than horror films. Mm. Definitely. I think these days kind of horror has kind of gone the way of gore is more isn't it it's sort of uh, mm. uh, I don't know people get kind of desensitised to it and people have to find new ways to kind of make things gruesome like Hostel was kind of I don't know yeah. it was a bit too much for me kind it's of. a bit more gruesome than um, psychological because a film mm. that still I find quite scary is um, the Blair Witch Project and you don't mm. actually see anything there's no blood there's not, no gore you mm. don't actually see the person or people <clears throat> carrying out the act of terror but it's that implied terror and what mm. you don't see, and that's mm. what makes your imagination run wild, and that's why I find that really creepy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, even I the was... films that sort of are kind of, I guess, considered horror movies, but, uh, you know, like the, the original Wicker Man, is, is more the suspense, is kind of yeah. is the not knowing what's going to happen. It's the, the slow that... burn, the drip-drip build-up as well in The Wicker that's Man it. that makes it such a great film. And, yeah. like, for me, horror movies... Um, tend to bore me quite a bit and also at the same time i am a bit of a scaredy cat as well so it's kind of a 50 50 for me that's the main but, reason Mike. yeah that's that, no that's the main reason yeah but the one the one film that really did get under my skin was um like a psychological horror and that was called um jacob's ladder oh and that's brilliant that is a fantastic film it's uh, basically i won't spoil the plot for you but it's uh, a film that's all about um psychological terror and sort of terrors of the mind and it's kind of the th- that the idea of that psychological terror i find far for far far more scary than like mm. you know something like hostel which is just yeah. makes me squeamish but doesn't actually scare me yeah in no, the, i totally you, agree yeah, yeah. that and was tim of, robbins wasn't it yeah yes it was yeah yeah, yeah. that he's, was one of like his uh, war, war breakthrough roles or something, wasn't he? that's right yeah He's a war veteran and you, yeah. he's having flashbacks or he appears to be having flashbacks, I should say. But I'm mm. not going to give too much away. But you should definitely yeah. go and watch that movie if you haven't seen it because it is fantastic. Mm. I second that notion. And mm. Silence of the Lambs, that's a classic. That's a brilliant mm. film. Yeah. It rubs the lotion on its skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, Green's Keep, that Green's Keeper mix. We'll have to get that. Yeah, I'll have to listen to that again. That's a great song. Have you start? You start. Have we started the singing bit yet? But it was. Do you know I was about to burst into song, and then I remembered. No, this might go public. So I won't. <laughs> There's it a strong possibility public. it will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I like the sounds of lambs. Lambs and lotion and it's skin. <laughs> okay. Oh, it gets their holes again. No. Speaking of films, <laughs> so, yeah, I saw a film last uh, week called um quadrophenia which is the um, oh, the who cool. film who's who's seen that Ma- michael I've, I've seen that film yeah um yeah i haven't seen I'm, it for a very long time yeah i wasn't that impressed to be honest i mean i, I love the soundtrack i've got the soundtrack yeah. but um i don't know i expected kind of it's more. more sort of an advert for the the who and the sort of mod mod style of life that they have yeah in. yeah um but you do get to see sting as a bellboy which, that um, was probably a high point, actually. And they had a musical number in the background play, Bellboy! Bell <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he makes an excellent Bellboy. He, he, 
<laughs> if there's one quote we want you to take away from this particular session, it's that Sting makes an excellent bellboy. <laughs> okay. Um, but, um, it's, on. it's also the the guy, f- the 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 main guy is from. Um, he's been in quite a few things, hasn't he? He's, he's in the yeah. Park Life video. Uh, he his is, name uh, is Ian something. Oh, no, God. Phil. Phil Daniels is that the one? Phil Daniels. That, yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. 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 Ian yeah, Daniels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, Phil. No, Ian. There's Phil. It's Phil Daniels. <laughs> it's just this bloke, right? This yeah, bloke. this 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 bloke. Well, the one that was in EastEnders. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. His he name was, a, was Kevin. Yeah, Park Park yeah, Park Park yeah, that's the one. Park so Park. yeah, I was I was a bit disappointed because <laughs> people kind of rave about Quadrophenia, but um, yeah. I think you're right. I think it's more it's more about the music. Yeah, if you, basically, if you like the band, then you're gonna, you know, love the film. But um, it's only sort of more of passing interest if you don't, if you're not nuts about the mu- uh, music that goes behind it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he just, I don't know, he just struck me as a bit of a bit of a shit character, really. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't really know what he wanted, and uh, mm. it all ended badly in the end. And he ruined Sting's motorbike. I know. <laughs> How can you do that to Sting? Uh, wasn't Sting in June? Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a that's a film from the past, there. Yeah. Oh, who else was it? Bowie was in uh, Labyrinth. Oh yeah. yeah. There's quite a few music. People he played a Goblin films, King. Didn't they? Yeah. yeah, he had a great little musical number. Mm. <laughs> Talking about films that have like really great soundtracks, I watched. Um, well, it's not coming out in England until March the eighth, but it's called Robot and Frank. Um, I think yeah. I've mentioned it to you guys previously already. Oh, yeah. But um, it's about, um, it's set in the near distant future and it's got like robot helpers and carers and stuff um, in like everyday life. And it's just basically the story about this guy, Frank, and his caring robot because he's basically suffering from um, worsening dementia. Um, mm-hmm. And his son, James Marsden, gets it for him. Um, but yeah, the soundtrack on that was, is, is not like anything I've heard before. It's quite. Mm-hmm. Um, Kind of, it's not Daft Punk kind of stuff, but it, it sounds something similar. But it sounds better. If that makes sense. Yeah, right. It sounds. It sounds. Yeah, it sounds really uh, futuristic and um, different and stuff. So that might be something that you should, well, when it comes out, obviously look into because um, yeah. that's quite quite a good one. Uh, I hope you're not dissing Daft Punk, there, Zara. <laughs> huh? I hope you're not dissing Daft Punk, man. I'm not dissing Daft Punk. I like Daft Punk, but this is like fight, a, fight, a fight. more modern twist on Daft Punk. Because right, Daft Punk is slightly dated, I think, now. Especially when Kanye <laughs> West kind of took, it, took him you know, under his wing. Kanye did, yeah, 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 didn't do it any favours, did he? That's to be fair. No. But, um, but it's still a quality band, yeah. Yeah, they did. Mm. So don't, oh. don't jump down my throat, Martin. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. I also saw Men in Black Three, which I was talking to Art and Zara about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good, actually. I, I, I didn't have high expectations, and I was uh, I was pretty pleasantly surprised. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's reasonably um, good, I think. Considering yeah. it's been like what ten years in between the second one and the third one, uh, mm. it's, yeah, it's not too too shabby, actually. Is Tommy yeah. Lee Jones in it much? Not, Not very really. much. I didn't like, think so. He, no, it probably equates to like five minutes of the film, sort of beginning and end. But um, but the guy that played uh, young Tommy Lee Jones, because they obviously go back in back in time and and see uh, him in his younger part of his career, and uh, mm, yeah. he was brilliant. He had the mannerisms. Josh Brolin. Down. Yeah, that's, Josh Brolin. That's it. Yeah, very good. The, the mannerisms, the way of talking. He must have yeah spent quite a long time studying him, I think. And uh, yeah. I think the only problem with that film was, um, well, I I personally think the choice of casting for um, the kind of villain in it, who was known as Boris the Animal, who was actually Jermaine from Flight of the Concords. I thought he might, I I was looking forward to it because I haven't really seen him in in much besides obviously Flight of the Concords. Mm. Um, Mm. And I thought it might be interesting to see what kind of humour and stuff he'd bring to it. But there wasn't really that Mm. much. And I wasn't much cool for it, was there? It sort of. He looked brilliant, I thought. The makeup and, and sort of the hair in the eyes, he looked really, you know, quite yeah. scary. But um, you, you wouldn't recognise him, but I just thought that maybe yeah. there'd be a, a better spin on his, his awkward comedy stuff, but there really yeah. wasn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's quite funny seeing those guys in, in actual films. It's like in, um, uh, what's it, Brett in The Hobbit, isn't he, for a very yeah. brief time. And that's <laughs> quite funny. He's just playing a really sort of serious elven part, kind of. 
his long, long Melvin locks. But uh, but yeah, I don't. He didn't really bring much to the film, to be honest. No, but he did get to date um, Nicole Scherzinger, <laughs> so I'm sure he was pleased about that. <laughs> Oh, this is true, yeah, with his long tongue. Oh, yeah. oh well, I was on a date her. She's horrible, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she I, I go through peaks and troughs with, with the Scherzi because uh, she's sometimes I really like her and other times I'm just like, shut up, you stupid woman. Oh, it's, no, I can't stand <laughs> her. Where, when she like puts words together, uh, me, what is it? Oh, God, I can't think of an example. Oh, amazing. Um, oh, Did my she God, invent yeah, amazeballs? Was she the... Well, she's that type of person where she's yeah. like, that was sh-may-thing. And it's like, look, love, it's one word. It's amazing. Get over it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's the side of her that I don't particularly enjoy. But she's easy on the eyes, so what can I say? <laughs> well, you could sound a bit ignorant here, but is she part of Girls Aloud? No, she's no, that's Cat Dolls. Cheryl, that's Cheryl Cole. All right. Pussycat no, she, Dolls. Pussycat Dolls. Pussycat she's the lead Dolls. of Pussycat Dolls, or she was. Oh, I don't know if they're still yeah. together. They did a song with the Snoop Dogg. Was the Snoop, Snoop Dogg. With the Snoop Dogg. The yeah. Snoop Dogg. You know his name isn't Snoop Dogg anymore, it's Snoop Lion. You need to update That's true. That. I stand yeah. corrected, actually. Yeah, it's Snoop oh, Lion. He's, uh, he's a Rastafarian now, isn't he? Oh, he's, <laughs> he's not converted easy on the, the eye, is he? That one. He's one of the ugliest people I've ever seen. <laughs> See, I think dog suited him better because he does look <laughs> a little bit resembling a dog, not in an offensive way, obviously. No, it's but quite sort of more so, so than a lion. Kind of a, a bit of a sort of snout going on, isn't he? Yeah. Of, I don't see how you can transform see. from a dog to a lion. It's not like you've gone from a cat to a lion. It's like <laughs> a dog. I, I it's don't, a bit, few steps too far in the evolution. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he should be wolf. Snoop yeah. wolf. That's better, actually. Actually, that sounds that pretty fucking good. <laughs> Maybe I'll wolf. let him know. I'll drop him a note on Twitter. Yeah, you should. You get, get in yeah. touch with his PR. So. <laughs> yeah. You've made a bad move here, guys. The wolf, that's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's cool. uh, right, we're going from one singer to another now, and that singer is me. Oh, oh no. So he's not looking forward to it because hey, he knows what's coming. Let me just turn the volume <laughs> on my headphones down. Yeah, everyone <laughs> listening, turn your sound down. Uh, <laughs> right, well, there's been like a few requests, not the floods, it hasn't flooded in, but no? my world famous uh, singing quiz where. I sing the opening couple of lines of a song and then everyone's got to guess it. It's not the easiest thing. It's because I'm not the best singer. Oh, Martin. Don't no, Martin short. has one note. The note is... Oh. <laughs> That's a good note. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the best note I find, personally. He, he holds <laughs> it well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do probably three songs. And then, yeah. Mm. You're going to do Once the I've... entire song? No. no, no. Don't worry. Don't Are we going to get a medley? I, no. <laughs> you just got to guess the first few lines. Uh, I'm going to sing the first few lines only. Hmm? And Sophie, then... gonna... Sophie could beatbox to, to support <laughs> this, this effort. So, uh, <laughs> and if this is successful, we'll do it every episode. But it's going to encompass recent releases to music from like the 1950s. So... All those genres, a bit of R&B, a bit of pop, a bit of rock. Bit of, wow. Bit of I'm really looking We're forward for to a this. Treat. Wow. Are we guessing this? Yeah. Oh, right. Just don't look at my notes. Not the viewers. Are we just going to shout out if we hear the it? Listeners, the what? listeners can join in on the fun. We'll wait, we'll wait okay. for Martin to finish first, I think, right. and uh, <laughs> so we get the full benefit of... <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Good thinking. Right, okay. The first song is... I threw a wish in the well. Don't ask me, I'll never tell. I looked to you as it fell, and now you're in my way. Call me maybe Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I kind of got that one, actually. Thank God there are some people here who listen to music. <laughs> I did not a clue. I'd be like that. Granddad. I'd be like that contestant on Nevermind. They get on Nevermind the Buzzcocks just for the comedy value, where they just have to go, mm, yeah, sounds great, but not a clue. <laughs> So, yeah, Sarah was correct. That was Carly Rae Jepsen. Would call me Maybe. My favourite tune. Right. Okay. <laughs> Something a little bit different, this one. Mm. See, I reckon you're about an eight or a nine. Maybe even nine and a Ooh, half before the streets. Time. 
That blue top top shop you've got on is nice. A bit too much fake tan though. But yeah, you score high. Yeah. But that's not that's sort of cheating that one because that's not really singing, is it? Yeah, that no, is actually but, how he but, does it. He just talks. Yeah, me. pretty much. I mean, it, for a second, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I was you actually captured the spirit to, to, to the streets. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 called um, fit and you know fit it. Isn't you know it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. High five. Oh. Zara's winning. I think you are pretty fit. That's that one. Isn't it? Yeah, that yeah. One. Where did they gosh. go? I don't know. Actually. Hmm, have to look them up afterwards. I think right, they had okay. a new album last year, but I never, never heard it. So. No. Mm. Right, next one. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> when you're feeling sad and low, we will take you where you gotta go. Smiling, dancing, Spice everything girl. is free. Oh. Spice up your life. <laughs> Spice up your life, yeah. I knew that one. I don't. Yes, that was the Spice Girls. That was lovely. Let me be the beautiful. first to say that was beautiful, Martin. You can't really beat the was. classics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wonder how the, uh, the listeners got on with that. I think. Wow, I think we lost a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. We we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll wait to Please see give how us your end. feedback on that if you want us to continue or not. I kind of know what your answer might be, but <laughs> <laughs> let us know anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, what we're going to talk about next? Let's go for. Oh, I've got something quickly. Oh, okay. Just really quickly. Um, UK, pre, uh, the premiere of Walking Dead Season 3 returned last night. I don't know if any of you watched it. Martin and Sophie, I know you watch it. We've recorded it. Yeah, we haven't watched it yet. What was it like? It was slightly predictable, mm. um, but it was still entertaining, I would say. Um, I it's, uh, Talking to one of the guys, um, actually the manly man that I spoke about last week, um, <laughs> yeah, him again. Um, I was talking to him about it, and because um, you know we've read like the comics and we've played the game, uh, well, the decent Telltale game, um, and <laughs> we're kind of disappointed, I guess, just because the way that it's rolling out and the way that characters are being introduced and things like that. But I think for people who haven't read the comics, because um, it's not really any relation to the game, really, um, mm. I think that people will still enjoy it. I would say. But yeah, the last series I thought was great. I thought it had some well, really good storylines. The first part of the third series, you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, the first yeah. part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second one, I nearly gave up with that. Yeah, it, it was, was very really slow. slow yeah. didn't it? They were just on that farm, and it was almost like Groundhog Day. It was the same episode every time you watched it. So I hope it doesn't slow down again. I think what they're planning to do is obviously that I think they got really bad feedback about the second season and how slow paced it was and everything, which is why they're trying to cram a lot of action and a lot of gore in um, mm. season three. So okay. I mean, still for me, I think the first the, the the first series was the best. Um, mm. you know, every every end of the episode, it had me gripped at the end of my chair, thinking, "What the hell? You can't leave me there." But uh, yeah, this this time round, I'm I'm still I'm still watching it, but I'm not um, as gripped as I was previously, I guess. But still Fair good, enough. still good. Watch it, still good. Yeah, just... I need to start. I need to get on board with this uh, Walking Dead stuff. Yeah, I've not, me too. Not seen any of it really. In fact, yeah. I I find myself wasting my time watching old series that I've already seen before. We're, like, we're watching Buffy at the moment because it's... Oh, you've got to love a bit of Buffy, though. It's yeah. brilliant, yeah. But I've seen it all before and I don't know... It's, I'm, I'm captivated by it and I shouldn't be because there's more <laughs> stuff out there that I need to, to get involved with. But That was back yeah. in the day where Sarah Michelle Gellar was still so hot. Yeah. What happened to it her? Was, Buffy, yeah. she was so amazing. She got it's breasts pretty bigger than her head. That's what happened pretty... to her. Pretty... Well, I've not seen her for ages, actually. She was in Cruel Intentions, wasn't she? Like, Yeah, yeah, she was still uh-huh. quite fit in that. It's just yeah. I wanted to be Buffy. If When I was younger, growing up, if I could be anyone, I was like, I want to be Buffy. She is awesome. <laughs> you kind of, she is the kind of the perfect kind of um, female heroine, I think. But, She's, but, you know. Sophie, uh, you weren't here last week, but James says he watches Sex and the City by himself. Watched. Really? Isn't past tense. Yeah. Past tense. <laughs> 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 Yeah, James, you definitely need to watch something a bit more manly. I think Walking Dead can tick that box for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're watching, um, what was it, something, oh, Homeland? That's kind of, yeah, that's got some some man 
credits. Man credits. <laughs> man credits. Man credits. Yeah, oh, we've only got one episode left to watch. So no. it's kind of, yeah, I want to watch it. it. Yeah. It's really good. It is really good. It is good. I still haven't started Breaking Bad, even though I said that two weeks ago I was going to, but I still have the DVD sitting here. Instead, I've been watching um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Have any of you seen that? I've I seen saw it when it used to be on, um, I think it used to be on one of the uh, preview channels, didn't it? And uh, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it, actually. I thought it had... It is pretty funny. A, it was a little had a little bit more bite to it and a little bit more edge than most uh, sitcoms that you come across these mm. days. Yeah, I, I think it um, it just goes to places that other people have kind of pussyfooted around, yeah. but they're kind of not scared to... They just barge you know, straight they, through on this. Yeah, exactly. Some <laughs> yeah. of the jokes that they've got about, like, molestation and stuff, they are yeah. they're really funny, but they're not, like, distasteful. I don't think it would offend too many people, but I think knowing that kind of the nature and the premise of what the show kind of does, I think people who are too easily offended wouldn't watch it anyway. Yeah. But yeah. it is yeah. amazing to watch. I would suggest watching it if you haven't already. But I think they are on like season eight or nine now. And I'm only on season yeah. two. But it is hilarious. It's got um, Charlie Day in it. He was in uh, Horrible Bosses. He was yeah. the, the, the short chap in Horrible Bosses. He was very good in that, yes. Yeah. Jennifer yeah. Anderson's... Uh... Oh, the dentist guy. Yeah, yeah the dentist. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. yeah, he was really funny. He's really good in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you should check that out if you get a chance. And, and are you still of... watching... Game of Thrones, was it? Yeah, yeah. really, really good, actually. Do you know what? It was slow to get into because yeah. there are so many characters in it. It's hard to keep track um, of, isn't it, to begin with? It is hard to keep track of, but we've just got to the end of the first series. We watched the last episode last night. And, yeah, I really, really do like it. It's pretty epic, actually. I mean, it gets much, much better, I think, as it goes through, although it's kind of... Uh, there's a couple of spoilers. I won't mention anything, but um, it's it's interesting because the the way it sort of follows the books, I think as the series go on, it gets more and more kind of different. It kind of goes away from the book, so it's kind of. I, I was watching the last series and I was like, I actually don't know what's going to happen next. This is this is fascinating. <laughs> I have to admit, I was quite devastated when Sean Bean's head mm. was removed. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely love that man, that was... and I was like, no, this can't be happening. Why, Joffrey? Bugger off! Was a low, that was a low point for me as well. I, 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 Sean Bean's one of my favourite actors. Mm. Um, yeah. But the fact that they would um, that have role. the balls to do that, though, I mean, that shows mm. that they. Once that's happened, it's like all bets are off, isn't it? You don't know what's going to happen to any of the main characters or anything. So, oh yeah, yeah. It totally yeah. sets you a precedent where, like, any, you know, everyone's fair game. <laughs> it's the you same in the up. books. You kind of you find yourself reading, you know, a certain chapter, and you think, God, did, did he did he really just do that? They surely didn't. Oh, he did. He actually did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, what you just said about and um, killing of Sean Bean. That sort of remind me just then of uh, Psycho, how that was that Janet Lee gets killed off halfway yeah. through. Mm. It's sort of yeah. like you didn't expect, you expected Sean Bean to stick around, although Ash, given his track history of dying and everything. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It was bound to happen at some but, point, wasn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, but it's, him yeah. dying is what instigates everything happening sort of now yeah. on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And from a series mm-hmm. perspective, I think it's it's pretty ballsy casting him in that role because you know, you know, he's not going to be around forever. He's probably the main uh, mm. sort of major actor in that in that yeah. series, and uh, you know, to get rid of him is quite a, quite a strong statement. You know. Yeah. There is a but game is. of uh, like a video game of Game of Thrones as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah James, I, I believe there is. I yeah. played played through all um all fifty hours of that. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, I don't know, I, it was brilliant in terms of the story. It was well written because it yeah. was um, done in conjunction with, with George Martin, who does the, um, He's the, author, the, isn't he? the books. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the story, you know, really was a high point. The yeah. actual gameplay was pretty pretty terrible, really. It was like um, Dragon Age, kind of like Dragon Age, but glitchier. Not as good. No, not, not as good. But, yeah. but, you know, compelling enough to, to keep me playing. Oh, um, and it linked yeah. in quite nicely with the the other stories because it's set it's set before Game of Thrones, so it's kind of um, oh, you get a bit of backstory then, bit of backstory, yeah, quite a nice little prologue. Oh, uh, that's cool. But yeah, I, I you know I'd recommend it if you're a big fan of the series. Because um, mm. there's books as well, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, um, is there I've books? <laughs> five of the books, I think. I think there's seven in existence at the moment. So it's quite a big a big thing then. It crosses across it's everything. A, it's a huge yeah, it's, 
It's a huge. Just waiting um, for a film. Then is there supposed to be a film? Just, <laughs> just no, I mean the, the series is still rumbling on. I think the third series series starts in March. I think in the USA. So oh, okay. um, we'll get it probably. I don't know Sky Atlantic or whatever it is, but um, mm. a bit downstream. But you guys have got Sky, haven't you? I'm a I'm a virgin yeah. virgin man myself. So, yeah. So, yeah, we've got to look forward to that. Yeah. Actually, I remember I got an email this week from Sky. It starts in April in the UK. Oh, really? Oh. So, yeah. But I guess... Is it, that that annoys me when there's a year and a half delay between the American premiere mm. and like, it comes over here. Yeah. Because we only just finished the seventh series of The Office, but we, like, it's nearly finished the series nine in America. Yeah, I was really it shocked at that. Me. I was thinking, oh, yeah, I've just finished season seven of The Office. Yeah, I'm really up to date now. And then when I looked... Um, mm. Like on IMDb, I was thinking, how is America already halfway through season nine? It's like I'm not happy about this. <laughs> yeah, at least with things like Walking Dead, at least with like days behind, yeah, like, the same week, so it's good. Mm. Yeah. The same is true for like South Park and The Simpsons yeah. and stuff as well. Yeah, I always feel like you're kind of watching. Really, it doesn't terrible. help with like the piracy side of things. Obviously, that's a huge argument generally. But when you've got a year and a half, it's like if you just sell it at the same time as America, people will spend the money at the same yeah. time, rather than if you physically can't make it available in the UK. It's true, yeah. But that's it's one true. of the arguments, but that's a, maybe that's for another episode. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Time yeah. On that. we're not condoning piracy, but, you know, I'm sure, that's, I'm sure that is a factor, yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, mm. I think we should move swiftly move our topic onto games, seeing as last podcast we didn't Indeed. talk about any games. So mm-hmm. if you want to crack on with what games they've been playing or um, whatever. James, you've well, been playing um, Mass Effect 3, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, about, what, what, when did it come out? Two years ago? A year ago? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's I'm been kind out of a for little a while now. Yeah. Good, but, um, but yeah, catching up nicely. I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying it, actually. It's, uh, yeah. it's a series that I always kind of I always forget how good the last installment was. And when I start playing it, I think, why the hell did I leave it this long? You know, kind of, um, yeah. as, a, as a fan of a sci-fi, I think it, it borrows so lovingly from, from other um, kind of sci-fi out there, you know, the Star Wars, the Blade Runner. It's uh, yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant. And there's a lot of really strong in characters version. as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a few missing from the last one. I don't know if they'll they'll make an appearance, but um, mm. they always kind of mix it up, don't they, in terms of uh, your sort of squad, yeah, and your, your allies. But um, but yeah, yeah, I'm quite enjoying it so far. Mm. It's only a year old. Not even a year old yet, actually. No. Came you came out. out last March. Yeah, last yeah. March. Uh, it's yeah. not too long ago then. I've, yeah. I've yet to play the the multiplayer, but um, I know it's actually people. half half decent. The multiplayer it is is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Does it influence I, the main story in terms it, of? It doesn't at the moment, but there is talk that they may they may bring in something like that. I mean, you mm. can have basically in the multiplayer there's stuff that you can do that will boost. The, your campaign in the main story, but it's not vital. So okay, yeah, because there is talk of sort of colonization or something, and you know, taking mm. over different areas of the the galaxy. And I, I thought, oh, does that have an impact? I don't know. Yeah, it do, it sort of does towards the end of the game, but not mm. drastically. Not drastically. Yeah, right. so, yeah. Mm. okay. Yeah. And it's yeah, released so. on Wii U, Martin. So if you want to purchase that on Wii U, then you can. <laughs> I've played the second and third one, so I won't buy it again on the Wii U. No. Oh. I've got to, there's too many games coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, Tomb Raider. Halo 4, you've just got? Yes, uh, yes I have it. got. Ooh. It arrived yesterday. It's technically a wedding anniversary present from the wife. Yeah, so stay away from it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it when's it when's the, the anniversary? 25th of Feb. Oh, right, oh, that's not, not too far off then. No, so I can't you, touch it. You, you'll, in, you'll enjoy it, Martin. You enjoy that campaign, every last minute of it. But yeah, I really didn't enjoy the first Halo. Mm. I played the anniversary. I just, I found it incredibly, incredibly dated. Yeah. But I enjoyed the third and Reach. Yeah. I barely touched the multiplayer because I just haven't had time. But I thought I'll wait for multiplayer for Halo Four. Yeah, I think I don't play multiplayer it's, much um, these days. They made a lot of improvements on Halo Four, um, so yeah. But the the actual campaign, I think you'll you'll get on quite well with because we were yeah. playing through Anniversary um, Combat Evolved at the same time, I think, and we were both saying, you know, the levels you just you're just literally walking around in circles. It's the mm-hmm. same kind of corridors, and it's kind of you know, go from point A to point B, and then to point C, but then go back to point B, and then and maybe <laughs> if you're lucky, you can go back to point A. But um, it's kind of yeah, just. 
you know, level design's come a long way since um, whatever it was, yeah. 99, 98? Yeah, it's a long time ago. So, yeah, I've got about nine days until I can play that Halo 4. Not cool. that you're counting. <laughs> <laughs> but what else? I'm hoping to get uh, Dead Space 3 I want to play. What? And Crisis 3 as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That was good fun um, when we, we demoed it at uh, Eurogamer. Yeah, I yeah. like the lethal... Yeah, playing as know. playing as a hunter is you know because you're so overpowered compared to the normal <laughs> <laughs> the other game yeah. is it really is quite fun you can like leap miles mm. into the air run really quick that's it, it makes you feel like the predator doesn't it you're sort yeah. of stalking yeah, yeah. your prey and sort of uh, yeah I tell that you, was quite good who's played um, mm. the the final the release of of aliens. Colonial Marines or failing. I was just about to come latrines. on to that actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about that. I mean, I, we played that at the expo, didn't we? And I, I remember thinking at the time, well, actually, the multiplayer is quite good because I was expecting mm. the aliens to be like really overpowered and like playing as a Marine would be really awful or vice versa. But they got the balance right. And I thought, yeah. mm. well, it looks a bit rough. But I was thinking, this is the first time I played a game like before it's come to market. And I was thinking, well, okay they'll polish that up, but apparently they didn't. No. Well, yeah, yeah. what's interesting, I've heard, I think they've denied it, yeah. but Gearbox, who made the brilliant Borderlands 2, yeah. they did the multiplayer only, mm-hmm. and they shipped off a campaign to someone else. That's right, yeah. And there's also, I can't remember which website did it, uh, but they did a wonderful job of comparing the pre-release demo Yeah. Uh, that's given to like, lots of journalists and the actual final game, and it's been horrendously cut back in terms of the detail and the lighting. Yeah, I saw that, so, and there was there was elements of the demo that didn't even make it into the final game. I mean, I think what actually well, was sort of included in that demo was probably about a minute's worth of actual gameplay from the game. So there was kind yeah. of, and oh. that was just a bit, I think, where you go into a room and shoot some aliens, which was um, you know, pretty straightforward. And, I, and I, was, <laughs> I haven't played it myself yet, but I've heard people say there's levels where there's no aliens, just like human enemies. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that, you don't want to play an aliens game. Mm. I think humans. it's you the um, the corporation, is it? The Wayland Corp? Yutani. You, yeah, yeah. You, you fight their mercs, apparently. Um, yeah, but right. the other thing is, it's supposed to be tied into the uh, to the Aliens universe. So they were like making a big deal at the time. They're making a big noise saying, oh, it's going to be faithful to like the second movie. It's going to be tied mm-hmm. in. And the second movie was basically about how um, you've got this group of guys and they've got this whole macho attitude. And it, it was showing how it doesn't stand up under pressure to you know it's basically you know it's yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's all that kind of semper fi kind of you exactly. know That's hoorah right. kind of business and, and, and it doesn't and, actually when it comes to the crunch it doesn't help you one little bit but the game yeah. actually takes it at face value and says this yeah. is you know this is kind of the attitude that you know yeah. we're gonna have and it doesn't really do anything to explore it the same way that the film does so because, yeah. yeah you you yeah you're really right mike because when because both Sophie and I really love the movie. Yeah. Like when Sigourney Weaver, a very strong female character, mm. she at the end is fine to hand to hand combat with the Queen alien. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, so the matchism didn't work, mm. no. but the female feminine power wins over. Yeah. Doesn't it, I, I mean, suppose? just like not even feminine power, but just like kind of her. You know her strength under under courage, her steel. You know, and she's it's not. Just, and the, it's just her humanity, isn't it? Really, exactly. Yeah. Maternal yeah. instincts kick in, yeah. isn't it? With, was it Newt? Isn't it, with little girl? Mm. Yeah, little, little Newt. They yeah. mostly Indeed. come at night. <laughs> but yeah, getting, getting <laughs> back to the uh, <laughs> getting back to the game, I'm I'm really sort of disappointed because I was we've waited so long. Like, if you're a fan of the series, which I am, for a game yeah. that actually does it justice. And it's true. It was such a fab opportunity, wasn't it, to do yeah. that? And you know, to just our hopes just were up, up really. Yeah, yeah, basically yeah. they have. Uh, Aliens was Infestation on the Nintendo DS. That's a good game. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it did well at all, but I'd recommend if you want to play a game around the Aliens franchise, play that. I'll have to have there's a look an, for that. There's an iOS game coming out um, at the end of this mm. year as well for Aliens. I don't know. If it's meant to be any good, but it's bound to be better than Colonial Marines, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> maybe that'll be. The Infestation one, that was only released on DS, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so. 
I'm and writing that down. You have to buy a new console, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> in best station. Station. Is, that the old, is that the old DS or is that the new? No, it's, I... just, it's just DS. It's not 3DS or anything, oh, right. I think. But I played it, it on 3DS. Cool. Like, you can play the yeah. old DS games Yeah, yeah you can still, console. yeah. But yeah, it obviously it won't look any... Yeah, it won't look 3D or anything. Yeah. We've got an old DS somewhere. It's, um... I'll have to dig mine out. Yeah. I used to play um, Professor Layton. That was... Probably in my uh, the height of my gaming career on the DS. That's, well, that's what I want Sophie to play because Sophie's not a particularly big gamer. She doesn't mm-hmm. run around shooting people in the face like Call of Duty style. Yeah, but I thought some nice little games like Professor Layton. Yeah, helps her brain power. It's, oh, I there's... need brain power. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's of a tuna. There's a lot to it actually. It's quite a good little story, but um, some of the puzzles are like fiendish. Really, it's mm. quite, quite difficult. But there's Phoenix hints, Wright too. as well. <laughs> Remember playing Phoenix Wright on the DS? Yeah. Objection! Oh yeah, I haven't played that. But you know, I've tried to finish a few games along those lines. I tried to get Sophie to play. Mm. But she'd rather watch Magaluf Wee Deckender or things like The Magaluf Weekend, Martin, is a very <laughs> awesome piece of television by ITV <laughs> that I would recommend to anyone that likes seeing teenagers vomit and drink. <laughs> that sounds Not in a bit like order. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Is it <laughs> unseen suspicious parents or something? Yeah, or anything like that. God, I remember watching that. Tea. Yeah, unseen suspicious parents, like where they Sun's... send they send yeah. them away, don't they? And they they sort of spy on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all a bit weird, really. I just, I just, anything like that's I, not my street. I kept imagining the conversation they would they would have <laughs> after the show. It's so like. <laughs> how oh. did you think that was acceptable to actually spy on me while I was going about my business? <laughs> and what did, what did you think was going to happen? You send them yeah. to Ibiza and then they're like, oh, they're drinking and smoking. I, I, I yeah. can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> they used to do, um, I don't know if they still do it, BBC Three used to show Booze Britain or Boozy Britain or whatever it was called. Oh, oh bizarre, it's one of my faves. Do they still do that? <laughs> No, they don't, but no. you can watch them all on YouTube. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> there are some great scenes on that. I mean, these people never live it down. It just I just don't understand why, you know, they obviously choose a certain group of people that they're going to follow for this particular episode, and they think that, oh, yeah, it's really funny and makes us look really cool that we act like complete and utter tools and just get completely shit-faced, and it... I don't know, it just makes Britain look so bad, really terrible. We're not all like that, if anyone's mm. listening from outside of Britain. We're not all that bad, but <laughs> there are the odd occasion <laughs> where some people are. <laughs> well, we suggested that we would have thought, what if it's like they followed us to Croydon one night, like me saving some friends last <laughs> night? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. When you're out drinking with your friends, you can be quite horrendous. And what's a good idea when you're drunk <laughs> is never actually a good idea. And I'm sure all of those people have now had to change their names, relocate <laughs> to Australia and dye their hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that might explain why a lot of the people that I went to school with now live on the other side of the world. Like, Australia <laughs> is a big place. Like I know a certain particular group of friends have moved over there. Maybe that's why. Maybe I should look it up on YouTube. Maybe they're on Booze Britain. <laughs> Go for it. If it had a rowdy night in Maidstone sort of thing. I did go to school in Maidstone. You should know this about me already. Crawley. Crawley, brav. Oh, God, that's terrible. Please, can you edit this bit out? (laughs) The Crawley Massive. Oh, no. I think we should change the subject. Who wants to talk about games? <laughs> well, I was wondering if you guys have been hearing the um, Xbox 720 or whatever the next generation Xbox is called. Loads of rumours flying around about that at the moment. Um, yeah. There's people basically saying that they think it's going to be always online, that you won't be able to unplug the thing. It will be connected to 4G mm-hmm. or something like that yeah. and um, that you won't be able to play pre-owned games on it. So Yeah, this is every a game. major talking point that people have sort of been going crazy yeah. about i don't think that that's going to happen i mean i hope it's no. not going to happen because it, 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 it would be market suicide i think yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. their but, biggest market is from pre-owned games i'm pretty sure yeah well we've already yeah. sort of come under attack from the fact that you've got games where you need an online license to, to you know play it online mm-hmm. which is kind of them trying to put in a buffer between people buying it second hand and Which I can least... kind of, I can kind of understand yeah. that. There, there's, you know, there's some sense in it. But and... to go for an outright ban just seems like, as you say, marketing suicide because that's yeah. what the bulk of purchases come from pre-owned, don't they? 
Well, yeah, I would say yeah. so. And, yeah. and from a console's perspective, it, it's not really a big issue, is it, if people are buying pre-owned games, as long as people are buying the console and supporting yeah. the brand and the franchise. But um, People will always find a way around it as well, wouldn't they? Mm. Once they heard that, they're yeah. probably already planning some kind of way that you can get around it. So I don't know how it would... Yeah, I mean, they're possible. talking about yeah. a bit like a PC. You'll have, like, product keys that once you've put your disk in and put in the registration product key, then the disk becomes basically useless on any other any other console, which is yeah, huh. it's kind of weird. But, I mean, you, you think about... Oh, people the, have gotten around that on PCs as well, yeah. though, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, if there's yeah. there's a will, there's always a always going to be a way. But um, think about the amount of the percentage of people that own Xboxes that actually have access to the internet. I think it's quite a small number. I mean, there's um, friends in America that have. That, that, I mean, they're basically still on on dial-up, really. So they don't. <laughs> they can't, oh wow! You know, <laughs> really? they live in the, the deep south, and yeah, they don't have broadband everywhere in in sort of you know Australia and America, and you know, pretty. Pretty shocking, really. So I, I can't see it having a, an always online feature because yeah, it, it would seem a little bit stupid. I mean, where um, well, obviously when I'm in the UK, where I am, we because we're in like the middle of nowhere, we get mm-hmm. like obviously Sky provides us with up to whatever ten meg or whatever, but our line probably only is capable of like one. So yeah, even, like is that copper wire sort of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even the um, like the dashboard update. Last time they did a dashboard update, it took me. Normally, for a normal person, it'd probably take them like five minutes to download. I was sitting there for an hour and a half waiting for it to download, and it, yeah, was, just, it was just like, oh, really? Our old place, <laughs> our old place didn't have um, access to fiber optics, and so we were on copper wire DSL. And yeah. um, I remember downloading the it was the Halo Reach beta, and yeah. um, I was sat there for about an hour thinking, oh, you know, this can't take too long. It's what like five gigabytes or something. Mm. Yeah, I ended up leaving the console on. <laughs> all night and yeah. uh, coming back to it at breakfast the next day and, and it still was on like 98% or something which is ridiculous yeah, so it's, it's, it's yeah, just not a feasible way of doing mm-hmm. things I don't think going forward yeah. the, uh, I think our, it's uh, maybe a generation too soon isn't it possibly For online only yeah probably yeah but we'll see I suppose yeah, uh, yeah. the other rumour that's come out well, it's not a rumour as such it's a Playstation controller image that's popped up online mm. yeah. yeah I think that looks pretty legit it, it looked legit to me, yeah. yeah. It looked lazy it's... to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, you can see the move integration like with the uh, coloured light bit at the top. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty legit thing. But It just uh, looks bigger, though, doesn't it? A lot bigger than... Yeah. Mm. But that might be a good job. thing, though, because like, once, once you've had a 360 control pad... To then mm. go back to a PS3 control pad, it just feels a bit lightweight. So yeah, I, does, I don't like it? that controller anymore. Yeah, pretty good. But uh, well, we will know because uh, I think by the next time we do the podcast, that big Sony event is taken would have taken place. Ooh, and hopefully the PlayStation Four will be revealed at that event, and then. We should have a lot more to go on. Indeed. Hopefully some games. Maybe Uncharted 4, a new kill zone. Maybe uh, a, a new Ape Escape game. Yeah. Ape Escape well, game. Well, that, game. Would... <laughs> <laughs> that would They'd probably that that. tempt me back into the the arms of, of the PlayStation. But we'll see. But, uh, so uh, <laughs> that could be really good news. I think, was it on the 28th of the last day of the month? Mm. I can't remember exactly, but... Uh, I think we'll talk about that next episode, yeah. which is timely, because I think we're going to have to call it a day now. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, in the meantime, uh, what are we going to do? What's Walking Dead? What's Hopefully start Walking the second Dead? series of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got some competition going on. Um, we've got yeah. the Hitman HD... Remix competition, which is yeah. also including some some pretty awesome swag. Which you'll... but that does end Sunday tomorrow. Sunday Sunday that, tomorrow. That's the that, official that date. Ends... Sunday tomorrow. <laughs> Sunday oh. tomorrow. So seven, so Sunday the seventeenth of February. Six p.m. Yeah. And, so and what you are to... what you're winning is the Hitman HD collection on PlayStation Three, a actual suit jacket, That's... a tie, <laughs> set of cufflinks, and an art book. Nice. If you're runner-up, you get everything but the game. Still quite so good. 
and yeah, there's three runners up, so there's a, quite a few uh, prizes to be dished out. There's going to be a lot of smart people walking around, that's all I can say. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of hitmen and hit, yeah. hit ladies. Hit ladies. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that ends to, uh, Sunday the 17th yeah. of Feb. Uh, so enter online at popbucket.co.uk. Uh, for updates on future competitions on news, you can follow at Popbucket UK on Twitter. You can also like us on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash Popbucket. And uh, yes, that's everything going on at the moment, I think. Oh, I should just mention, I should have a review uh, posted soon, shouldn't I, for Metal Gear Rising. So... Revengeance, yes. Oh, revengeance, yes. Uh, so uh, stay stay tuned for that. It's going to be <laughs> yeah. a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So you can't. Mike can't say much now, but uh, yeah. you can look forward to. It. What was the date? When does the review go live, Mike? Uh, I think it's Tuesday. I believe it's Tuesday, the eighteenth. So. That's cool, then. Well, everyone yeah. can look forward to that, Mike. Your wonderful words. Well, I should try my best. <laughs> All right. Uh, so everyone, say goodbye to the world. Thanks Bye. for listening, guys. Goodbye, world. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Bye-bye. everyone. Uh, you've been listening to the Pop Bucket podcast, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.